Welcome to Left Undone Incomplete Investigations. I've been working on this video for a little while and I want to share it with you. It was a request from one of the subscribers to look in to what to expect when Lori and Chad, Lori Vallow Daybell and Chad Daybell are in prison. With the help of one of my amazing subscribers, I was able to dig pretty deep into what they can expect. So let's talk about it. Welcome to Left Undone Incomplete Investigations. I'm Catherine. research for this video for quite some time. I've read a 23 page Idaho Department of Corrections offenders handbook. I found the monthly menu to see what Lori and Chad will be eating. I've researched visiting applications and visiting rules, housing rules for a couple of different units, count procedures, clothing rules, dining hall rules, and hygiene rules. How inmates are received, how inmates are classified, how much money inmates can spend on commissary weekly, and property and state issued clothing rules. After researching, I've come to the conclusion that Lori and Chad are going to have a very difficult time getting used to their accommodations if and when they're found guilty. After entering Idaho Department of Corrections, Lori and Chad will go to RDU. In RDU, they'll both be given one razor, two bars of soap, one styrofoam cup, one toothbrush, one toothpaste or tooth powder, and one small pencil. They will both remain in RDU until they receive the following. Fingerprinting, DNA, ID card, medical dental screening, mental health screening, drug alcohol screening, education screening, LSI, level of service screening, Pathway evaluation, program plan, security, PREA, grievance, program orientation, classification. Lori and Chad will both be assigned a case manager and will be required to follow their case plan. The RDU process takes approximately two weeks. In my opinion, the classification process will be the most important part while in RDU. This decides how dangerous they are to determine where they will be housed. After Lori and Chad leave RDU, the state will issue the following articles. Two pair of blue denim jeans, two pair a denim shirt, three pair of underwear, three undershirts, bras, three undershirts or bras, three pair of socks, one belt, one buckle, a pair of boots or shoes, two cotton towels, two cotton sheets, two blankets, three during the cold season, one denim jacket, that is seasonal, one stocking cap, which is also seasonal, one nylon laundry bag. One of my subscribers who had been incarcerated in a different state said there are no issued pillows in prison. Can you imagine not having a pillow? Oh my goodness, I live for to sleep with my pillows. They are just my most important thing while I'm asleep. During count, Lori and Chad must be on their bunks and remain there until both officers have passed and counted. There's a 4, 10 p.m. sitting count, so they'll have to be sitting up on their bunks with their ID card visible. If Lori, Chad, or any offenders hear a siren, it's an official notification to all offenders and staff of an exercise, emergency situation, disturbance, etc. Lori and Chad must obey all orders given by the staff in a prompt manner. When a siren sounds, all activity will cease and everyone will remain where they are. 
Lori and Chad will have to immediately place their hands upon their heads and sit down until they're given direction by staff to do otherwise. Lori and Chad must keep their hands on their heads as they are escorted by staff back to their units to be secured. Offenders will be moved according to their units. All units will be secured until further notice. And also, offender phones may be shut off. You have to keep in mind, this is a real penitentiary. Not a Hollywood prison, but the real deal. Some of these offenders are cold-blooded, calculated, premeditated murderers. Lori and Chad will eventually fit in with that crowd. Baby killers are despised in any prison setting. Lori and Chad will carry that jacket of a baby killer for their entire incarceration. A jacket is something put into the files for any offender. If either requests protective custody for fear of retaliation, it could be a couple of years before they will be reviewed to leave solitary confinement. Any religious items cannot be visible and could include religious medallions. Some items are allowed only in an offender's cell or in the chapel. In order to purchase a religious item, Lori and Chad will have to send paperwork to get the item approved. They will be able to buy from the commissary or approved store, such as a reputable retail bookstore who can mail the item to them. But there is, however, a volunteer program called Religious Chapel Programming. It's open to offenders in general population. The main purpose is allowing offenders to gain a greater knowledge and understanding of the offender's faith, doctrine, beliefs, conduct, and religious observances. Accomplished by offering interdenominational worship services, religious education classes, religious counseling, crisis follow-up, and other religious needs in close cooperation with security and other programs. Lori and Chad can have visitors. The application is very thorough. There are several questions about whether the applicant is currently visiting another inmate. The prison administration doesn't want a go-between. So the two inmates the applicant visits can communicate. To be a visitor, you cannot be on probation or parole and visit an inmate unless specifically it has been pre-authorized. So if Melanie Pulowski gets prison time and parole or probation for any crime she has possibly committed, in my opinion, she will not be able to see Aunt Lori until she is free and clear or gets special approval to visit. The IDOC wants to know a lot of information from who might want to be Lori or Chad's future visitors. They want to know if the applicant has ever been a victim of a crime or if there's any pending criminal charges. They do a complete background check. The visitation rules seem reasonable. Lori and Chad will only be able to bring legal work, paper and pencil or pen. The visitor is only allowed to bring a photo ID, money for a vending machine, car keys, and if there's a child with the visitor, they can bring in a diaper bag. The diaper bag can only contain diapers, wipes, pacifier, two bottles of formula, milk, water, or juice, and one container of baby food. This is so it is easier on the prison staff to do a search for any contraband. Lori and Chad can receive mail Monday through Friday, except on holidays. The only exception is legal mail which is sent to the housing unit to be opened in the presence of an officer and will have to sign a log sheet upon receipt of their legal mail. Outgoing mail must have a stamped envelope purchased through the commissary or distributed through the indigent process. If Lori or Chad are ever considered indigent, 
they may request a free stamped envelope. Outgoing mail has to be given to a staff member on the unit. The handbook does state that related immediate family members like Lori and Chad, since legally married, can file an offender to offender correspondence request so that they can be able to communicate. They can send letters through in-house or institutional mail. We all know that Lori is out of money, according to Mark Means. And with Chad, he's been spending the rest of Tammy's life insurance money payout to pay for John Pryor, his own defense. So with all this, all said and done, both Lori and Chad could be indigent offenders. Meaning if they're broke, if, they're, if their inmate trust accounts have a balance less than the cost of a stamped envelope through commissary and there's been no deposits for 30 consecutive days, if they're indigent, they would be eligible to receive four envelopes and eight sheets of paper per month for up to four domestic or international letters. If Lori and Chad are found to be indigent, they'll also be able to receive up to 25 sheets of paper per week for the purpose of legal mail. If Lori and Chad have no money, they will be given hygiene items from staffing housing units, and these items include toilet paper, soap, razors, toothpaste, toothbrushes, and they're all provided in exchange basis. I found IDOC's monthly menu online, same breakfast and lunch each week, starting on Sundays. This is based on a 2,900 calorie intake daily. Oats three days a week, farina two days a week, and bran flakes two days a week. Lunch consists of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, potato chips, and veggie sticks three days a week. I don't know about you, but I get nauseous thinking of eating the same thing over and over and over again. Lori and Chad are not gonna have a great time. So let's take a look at the menu. Breakfast, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Bran flakes, oatmeal, farina, oatmeal, farina, oatmeal, bran flakes. There's some, they threw in some biscuits with country gravy, hash browns, sugar and milk on Sunday. Um, PB pancakes, syrup, margarine, sugar, milk on Monday. French toast, margarine, sugar, milk, syrup on Tuesday. Wednesday, there's some scrambled eggs, sugar, milk, margarine. Thursday, pumpkin bread, margarine, sugar, milk, no pork sausage. And Friday, banana pancakes, sugar, milk, syrup, margarine. And on Saturday, breakfast hash, bread, margarine, sugar, milk. Looks like there's a snack between breakfast and lunch of fresh fruit every day. And lunch, muffin or cereal bar, sunflower seeds, turkey salad, bread, tortilla chips, cookie, peanut butter, jelly, bread, veggie sticks, potato chips, ham salad, bread, tortilla chips, bar cookie, peanut butter, jelly, bread, veggie sticks on Thursday, deli meat, bread, mayo, mustard, tortilla chips, and peanut butter for the third time in the week, jelly and bread. Then you go to dinner. Dinner actually has more variety. Sometimes I'm seeing spaghetti sauce, noodles, tossed salad, bread, margarine, and a cream pie. Then I see mac and cheese, ham, peas, carrots, bread, margarine, fruit, and gelatin. Day three, beans, tossed salad, vinaigrette, bread, margarine, fruit cup. And day four, fish portion, a bun, mayonnaise, hash brown patty, coleslaw with carrots, fruit, ketchup, lettuce. Day five, beef burrito, salsa, Mexican rice, corn, pudding, lettuce, and tomato, onion. Day six is pizza day, Friday's pizza day, just like back at school. Pizza, tossed salad, vinaigrette, and fruit, cake or brownies. Day seven, that's Saturday, hamburger patty, bun, lettuce, tomato, onion, ketchup, mustard, hash brown patty, green beans, fruit, fruit cake, or brownie. So you can see, not the most exciting menu in the world at all. Very 
boring, bland, and not that appetizing. I'm sure Lori and Chad will enjoy. Not going to have a great time. As a matter of fact, I could bet money that there's actually people on the inside that already know their story and are more than willing to make their lives a little more difficult than just being in prison. Thank you for watching Left Undone, Incomplete Investigations on Catherine. If you haven't done so, please like and subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. Like I said, this is the channel to follow if you want to follow the Lori Vallow Dayval case, as well as other intriguing, interesting, newsworthy cases. Be safe, stay well, take care, and stay home for now. Thank you for being here, and please consider helping support Left Undone by clicking on my Amazon affiliate link or my Instacart affiliate link. You can also support the show by becoming a Patreon, donating through PayPal, or donating through Buy Me a Coffee. Or you can become a channel member here on YouTube. Thank you for being here. Please see the links in the episode description below.